This is going to be my first part of my three-part video review of the Copper River 15-inch Lincoln Classic Leather Briefcase. This particular briefcase is in the distress color. Um, like my other three-part video reviews, uh, we'll, we'll go over this in kind of a structured manner. The first part of the review, what you will be seeing today, we'll be talking about the outside of the bag, the overall appearance, the leather, the quality, all that. The second video, we'll talk about the inside of the bag, the usage of the bag, um, kind of the, how well it's designed, if there are any issues with the design. And the third uh, video is gonna be an overall conclusion about the bag as a whole. So this particular bag, if you've seen my other reviews, um, especially my unboxing video, one of the things I talked the most about was the leather of this bag. So we will go into a little bit of detail about that. Um, starting off with the basics, this bag is 15 and a half inches across, uh, 10 and a half inches high and has a gusket on the side that's five and a half inches deep. This is essentially um, somewhere in between the medium and the large size in terms of length and height compared to the Saddleback Classic briefcase and thinner so it doesn't have as much depth to it. Um, I originally bought this bag to use as a carry-on bag for my travels just because i had been bringing a lot of saddleback leather and a lot of floato bags along with me. And I really was just looking for a very ideal carry-on bag situation because I was kind of substituting bags that were better for other jobs when I was flying. And I came across these bags, they were very reasonably priced, I decided this is a great time to try it out. So. Before we dive into the parts of the bag, I want to talk about the leather of this bag. Um, I had the opportunity after opening this bag just to do a little bit of quick conditioning on this bag. Um, I used a little bit of chamber lens number one on it, scrubbed it with uh, just like a cotton applicator pad and got rid of some of the oils that were originally in here and kind of um, brought up a little bit of the natural fibers of the leather. And what you see here is this absolutely gorgeous leather that has this amazing feel to it and that you can basically use your finger, as you can see here, to write all over the bag. And it is gorgeous. This leather is incredible. It is so, so beautiful. You can see that it has a lot of natural markings along with it. It's their distressed leather. So it's supposed to build a lot of pull up from the bag, which means that as you're using the bag, um, different colors start showing up as the leather starts getting kind of scrubbed and um, raw a little bit. But just naturally, this leather is absolutely gorgeous and it is just on par with some of the best leather that um, Saddleback makes. So two of Saddleback's most desirable leathers right now currently would be what would they call their current roughed up leather or what some people online call their velvety leather. The other is referred to as um, their dusty carbon. And that was when they had this kind of um, velvety feel along with it on their black bags. This particular color doesn't really fit the tobacco or the carbon. I would say that it fits closer to the carbon color, but this is more of a lighter version of the dark coffee brown color with just a very amazing feel to this leather. Um, I've had the opportunity with this bag over um, the last few weeks to be able to go on flights with it, drive around on it, stuff it, and you can see um, Part of the reason I bought this bag was I know I can throw this around, not exactly treat it well, and it will do fine, and the cost is low enough that I'm not too worried if I end up destroying this bag, and you can barely even tell this bag has been used. So I, I gotta say kudos to Copper River. Um, I had the opportunity to reach out to them after I got this bag to ask specifically about this leather because I just found it so incredible. Um, what they said was that uh, they've actually gone through several different tanneries to meet the quality standards that they've set for this particular leather. Um, all their leather comes from cows and are sourced or I guess comes from cows in the United States and they're tanned at separate tanneries. Currently they use three in three different countries. So there's one based in the United States, one based in Italy and one based in Mexico. And they've gone through actually several to find the exact quality of leather that they're looking for. So it goes to show um, a company that really puts a high standard in the quality of their products and takes the time to find the right kind of vendor for their leather 
exactly what you can get out of it, which I find absolutely amazing. So we will start basically on the outside like I always do with the shoulder strap. So this shoulder strap uses one single shoulder pad, as you can see here. So the single shoulder pad is an unlined pad, so it is the raw chrome tan leather on the back side, and then just sewn with no neoprene like you would see on some of Saddleback's um, products. Um, if you watch my other reviews, you know, in my general feeling, whether or not neoprene is present makes very little difference onto the effectiveness of these shoulder pads. I feel like these shoulder pads work fine either way because mostly the distribution of the weight comes from the width of the pad, not as much the compression from the neoprene. So I find, especially with this bag being thinner, you can't really load it up as much. It works incredibly well for that. Um, the rest of the strap, um, they, it uses these lobster claw at the ends, which I really like, um, harking to the older Saddleback designs. Um, there are two fixed areas for the lip of the strap to come out of, which um, if you've watched my other reviews, sometimes I find very frustrating. I like the designs where they're movable and you can slide them up and down, but um, a lot of manufacturers choose to take this route instead. And then there's a handful of strap holes for you to choose from. Not as much as Saddleback does, but um, a good number. The strap tends to be slightly shorter, shorter than Saddleback, so I'm 6'1", and really I've got it almost near the very end for me to get a comfortable height out of this strap. But it works really, really well. I haven't run into any issues. I really can't see anyone unless they're like seven feet tall needing to have a longer strap than this. And it actually works out well because if I adjust it to my height, um, the lip actually just goes a little bit past the first strap holder, which is fine. Um, in Saddleback, one of the frustrating things is when I adjust it perfectly to my height, this uh, extra lip piece doesn't quite fit under the second strap holder. So you have this massive section flopping around, which means I need to make it slightly shorter than I would ideally like. This allows me to meet my ideal length without having a section that's flopping around too much. So it actually works out extremely well. So um, I very much do enjoy this strap. I think it works well. If you look on the back of this strap, um, like the pad, it is unlined. So one of the things I'm gonna talk about is, um, this bag is significantly lighter than Saddleback's bag. And um, part of the reason why I chose this bag was because it was lighter, so it's easier to carry around the airport. Um, you aren't carrying up as much of the weight of the bag. And part of the way this lightness is achieved, I guess, is by using just single pieces of leather without um, kind of putting them back to back on each other to allow you to use this bag in a way in which, um, you know, it doesn't really compromise the integrity or the strength. It just kind of looks a little bit different on both sides, but still works really, really well. And if you know anything about Saddleback in their oldest um, bags, the first ones they produced, they actually did this exact same thing. They just used unlined leather. So I really enjoy it. These straps are the exact same kind of leather you can see here. You can really just mark back and forth with your thumb on this leather. It's absolutely gorgeous. So the front of the bag, other parts of this design. So um, great things about this design, the side straps are the exact length that you need for the bag, which I absolutely love. So Saddleback, as much as I love the company, for some reason, they use incredibly long side straps. I think part of it is because the bags are so compressible that when they're loaded to their fullest length, you need really long side straps to be able to appropriately close the bag down. Because this bag is thinner, it allows you to use thinner side straps that you know actually meet the dimensions of the bag without having a massive piece of the strap just like flopping around in the wind. So now I no longer have to tuck the strap upward for it to look nice. Even if I leave the side straps unbuckled, it still looks very complimentary because these straps aren't kind of bent over and hanging down on the ground. So I really like the length of the strap design. It goes to show how much thinking went into the design of this bag. Because if you look here in an unfilled way that this bag naturally sits, 
that side strap length is almost perfectly to the bottom edge of the bag. So they clearly designed the side strap length with the overall dimensions and the overall aesthetics of this bag in mind. Um, it's one thing that I'm gonna go to over and over again. This bag was designed for one pretty specific purpose, and I think it hits that purpose really well, which is a very lightweight, beautifully made leather bag that is affordable. Part of being affordable means sometimes you can't do a lot of the things that the larger manufacturers do, but it actually works to my advantage as a carry-on bag. So I think all these things that make it quote unquote more affordable make it a better and better carry-on bag, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I'll explain it as we go along. So the handle to this bag. The lack of the back D-ring like you have in Saddleback means that this handle is extremely easy to grip and hold. It's um, a fairly long length, which means you can hold it anywhere along the length of the handle. It doesn't have the PVC piping in the middle like you would in Saddleback, so it kind of conforms to your hand a little bit. So if you look here, as you hold it, it kind of bends a little bit to fit whatever um, shape your hand is and the size of your hand. I really like it. I think it's incredibly comfortable to use. It uses um, a design that you see kind of in Morlando, a lot of other bags, which is one leather strap that goes across both D-rings and then another piece of leather wrapped around and sewn at the very top, which allows you, like Saddleback uses a similar design, to hold it very naturally and your thumb kind of rests along that stitch theme while your fingers rest along the other side. And it just gives you a very comfortable feel and it feels as if you have a very nice grip on this bag as you're carrying it along. So I really enjoy this. Um, it uses two rings to secure it. Um, these straps are actually not riveted down. They're only sewn down. So you can see here, there aren't any rivets. Um, given the size of the bag and the minimal amount of weight you're gonna put in this bag, I don't see this as a point of failure for the bag. Um, it's very well sewn. Now, I could be completely wrong, and if I do run into issues and that does start to fail, I will make another video to talk about it. But I do think that this does not need to be a piece to be riveted down like you would in Saddleback. Not only is this is bag lighter, it holds less volume, which means that you really can't load up this bag as much. So it's not really a worry that this part is gonna fail on me. Um, the center strap here is also sewn on without a rivet. So if you look here on the back side, you can see that it's just sewn on with a couple stitches and you have three size holes to choose from, which goes along with the theme that they've been using, which is they create this bag to very specific standards. So it looks nice as it's sitting there, but it also means you lose a little bit of your choices that you get in terms of uh, having extra strap length if you really want to overload this bag and make it so it's so full that it's barely holding on. This bag would not fit that, which is fine. I'm using this as a carry-on bag. This fits in front of the seat in front of me, which means that there's an absolute thickness limit to this bag. So I would never load this bag in this way. So depending on what you're looking for, it's very important that you choose your bags correctly. And what I'm looking for is a carry-on bag that I can bring as a personal item onto an airplane. And this design fits that need perfectly without any excess pieces. Now, if you're using this bag for something different, you need to fit what your daily needs are to the particular pieces of this bag. Um, one other thing about this bag in the front is you have their um, Copper River Bag Company kind of logo stitched across the front here. The back of this bag. So the back of this bag has one single large pocket. Why do I love this pocket so much? Well, if you've watched my other videos, I always complain about the fact you can't fit a full sheet of paper into the back of this. Well, look here. You fit a full sheet of paper into the back of this pocket. None of it sticks out. None of it gets wrinkled. It fits in really, really nicely. And you don't have to worry about it getting all messed up as you're walking along. As a carry-on bag, this is incredible because I carry this bag onto a plane and use it during meetings. And in meetings, when I bring packets for clients that I'm meeting, when I'm taking pieces of paper, I don't want to give them wrinkled up pieces of paper. I also don't want to be seen fumbling around with my bag trying to pull out a folder getting those pieces out. This back pocket is a perfect place to hold the papers, but with saddleback bags, I could never do that because the front part of the paper, about an inch, would stick out and it would get all wrinkled up and it just wouldn't look professional. With this bag, it looks perfectly professional, looks really crisp, and works really, really well. So I love this back pocket. It's very well designed. Um, one of the unique things about this back pocket, I'm not really sure why they chose to design this, the length doesn't go all the way to the bottom 
which I actually, and I don't know if they thought it out to this degree, possibly they have given how much they thought about everything else. The back gusset of most of these bags when you don't load them out full, fully, start to bend in one direction or the other. Moving the side pocket upwards means that this pocket will not bend with this gusket, this little extra piece of leather at the bottom, which means that this pocket will always stay a uniform flatness. While with some of the older saddleback bags, especially once you've been using it a while, and this back piece here starts to kind of bend back and forth a little bit a lot and starts to rest in really odd positions, you start to find that you start to lose usable space in the bottom part of this back magazine pocket because it starts to bend with the rest of the leather and suddenly you can no longer fit something all the way down if you don't want to get bent and put in a weird direction. So I'm, I, I would guess that they thought about that, which is why they moved the pocket up probably an inch or so. If they didn't, it's just, you know, serendipity that it worked out this way and it makes this a much, much more usable pocket rather than a pocket that's like halfway up that you know, it's great that it's there, but you can't actually functionally use it in any type of professional setting, which can be a little frustrating. All right, the sides of this bag. This is a very, very simple bag, but it does come with two very helpful pieces, which is two large pockets. So this is a 5.5 inch gusket, which means that this pocket here is 5.5 inches across and has a lot of depth. Look, it takes up nearly this whole side when you take away the D-ring section and a little bit at the bottom. This gusket is massive. You could fit water bottles, you can throw your watch or whatever you need into here as you're going through security. I like to throw my watch, my wallet, my keys into these side pockets as I'm going through security. And with the saddlebacks, the pocket was so short that I always worry that if my bag tipped over or something or someone could just reach in and pull out my wallet, this is deep enough that I could fit that stuff in without having to worry too much about it. Speaking of the D-rings, there's only two rings on this whole bag. There's none along the bottom because I use this as a carry-on bag. I can't really strap anything to this bag because the extra space it takes out means I can no longer fit it under the seat. So I was looking for a bag without all these unnecessary D-rings to strap things onto because I would never use them and they would just kind of take up space. So I think this is a much cleaner look. It just has the single D-ring on both sides for the shoulder strap and nothing more. So as a carry-on bag, perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. Also, the less pieces of metal, and I don't know if this is necessarily true, I feel as if going through security with less pieces of metal on your bag probably makes the lives of everyone, including the TSA agents, a little bit easier to deal with. So this bag, I think, walking through the outside is exactly what I was looking for. You know, you got this full size back pocket that I can use for meetings and put papers in, this easy to hold handle, this very thin gusket that allows me to easily slide it under the seat in front of me. Even if I occupy the full thickness of this bag, it still slides in under the seat in front of me. Nothing to have to worry about these front shoulder side straps looking weird if they're just sitting out by themselves. Because, you know, going through the airport, I use all three of these. And then in any other situation, I only use the center strap, which means that I can leave this just kind of sitting out and it looks perfectly fine. It doesn't look as if, you know, it's out of place. I need to tuck that in. It still looks very professional and beautiful. So overall, outside of design of this bag, I think they hit a home run. Um, in terms of the stitching, usual stitching, this is a very, very thick waxy thread that's going to last a long, long time. I think they mentioned their website, it's marine grade thread. The leather, great leather. So stay tuned for my next video where we'll talk about the inside of this bag.